Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser Boxing Blog. Please, if you enjoy the blog today, hit the subscribe button. We love growing the Hellraiser Boxing YouTube family. Um, okay, fine, I'm gonna look at today, Anthony Joshua against Andy Ruiz Jr. Um, let's look at the heights first, because this is the thing that um, I think maps out how the fight's gonna go along uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so I'll give you the look that you've got Anthony Joshua, six foot six, reach of 208 centimeters, Last time out he was 245 pounds, 22 and 0 with 21 knockouts. Against Andy Ruiz Jr, a uh, very unimpressive type of physique, uh, carrying a bit of excess weight, he's 6 foot 2. Uh, he's got a reach of 188 centimetres, so there's 20 centimetres uh, reach disadvantage, which I think tells you a lot about how the fight will unfurl and what the tactics will be for this fight, because that's, I remember the first time I ever boxed someone that had a longer reach with me and he had probably about a one inch advantage or not even that, probably three quarters of an inch. But I remember when it first hit me, wow, there are parts of this ring where he can hit me and I can't hit him back. It was the first time ever because I had quite long gangly arms. Um, well, 20 centimetres, I mean that, that, that defines the tactics without even thinking about it. I mean Joshua needs to keep it long, he needs to keep his feet moving sideways, um, he needs to impose himself um, at range in order to keep the fight at that that long distance and the moment that um, Ruiz uh, his feet slow Joshua's won the fight so I think he needs to tire Ruiz out through his straight punching keeping it at range forcing Ruiz to come round and work to get inside and not letting him inside the other side of it Ruiz needs to get inside he has very good head movement um, you can see the fight he had with uh, Josh, uh, with uh, Joseph Parker, uh, where he actually he, he uses good head movement. He sort of draws the jab. He gets inside of the jab. What disappointed me against Parker is that too often the the attacks once he was in there, he'd done the hard work, he got inside. He didn't really optimize it. He didn't then follow it up with a series of four or five hard punches, switch around the side, and then come back with another flurry. It was more like single shots, and a lot of those punches were arm punches. So, not, not punches that really would have knocked the stuffing out of Joseph Parker. And for me, Joshua is a better version of Parker, of what Parker does. You know, fast hands, trying to keep it long, uh, lots of feints, lots of trying to sort of open little angles, throw one shot and move. Um, Joshua um, will throw combinations more than Parker, and I think for that reason it, it, it works in Joshua's favour uh, in the fight. Um, Ruiz... Junior, he boxed a guy that I managed, Rafael Zambano, Brazilian. Um, wasn't particularly happy how the negotiations went for that fight, but anyway, that's another story. Um, the, the names on his record, they're sort of decent domestic level guys on Rui's record. There aren't any flyers in there, and even since the... Like, I was hoping that the opponent would be someone that had a recent win against a top-rated heavyweight. Well, Andy Ruiz Jr.'s last fight was against Alexander Dimitrenko, a guy that I nearly signed at the start of his career, East European, big, tall guy. Um, but the party is definitely well and truly over for Dimitrenko. I mean, watch the fights on YouTube, Dimitrenko against uh, Ruiz Jr. And you can see in Dimitrenko's face at the, after the fight, he looked so sad and disappointed. It was quite sad to watch because you can see that's a fighter's face who realises the game's up you know it's finished I can't do the things that I could do before I'm slower I'm getting hit with shots that wouldn't have got close to me previously um, and for that reason I mean I, I really wanted to see someone going in that was a real live opponent I thought it's um, a big opportunity for Joshua to build a big name for himself in America well even if he knocks Ruiz out in the first round or if even if he doesn't, if it's a longer fight, it's a bit of a slugfest and he ends up beating him, uh, you know, in spectacular fashion late on. I think most people in America will just shrug their shoulders, you know, that's not going to get them excited. Um, a, a knockout win against Ortiz, and I think it's the right time to fight Ortiz. When Matchroom signed Ortiz previously, Ortiz still looked a very much live opponent, and uh, a cynic would say they signed him for the purpose of keeping him well away from Joshua. Um, now, I think it's the right time to fight Ortiz. Ortiz has um, built a name for himself of sorts in America. Um, he's never quite achieved at the highest level. 
um, since in, throughout his pro career, he's never quite uh, sort of gone in and uh, gone through, you know, like the, the, the fight against Wilder. He really gave it a good go. But that's why I'd have picked him, because that's a guy that in America, like a, 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 imagine, and I think it's the right time to fight. I think Ortiz, I mean, he looks every single day of his 40 plus years. I mean, I've heard different stories as to what age he truly is. Um, and it's always a lot older than the, the age that you see on Boxrec or on uh, his medical card. Um, I think it's the right time to fight him. And a spectacular knockout win against Ortiz, that would really capture the imagination of the people in not just America, all over the world, because Ortiz is, he, his reputation is there from his fight with Wilder. Where he came very close, it was a very, um, good performance from him that night. He, he, again, maybe his age caught up with him because his work rate suddenly uh, collapsed, <laughs> disappeared, and uh, Wilder caught up with him. But a great fight. And if, if Joshua goes in and made easy work of him, which I think potentially very well might do now, um, that would have got everyone excited and it would have pushed, uh, like, you know, Joshua, they, they, they've just done this uh, deal with DAZN and working in America, and it would have put Joshua out there um, in line with some of these um, big, big stars of the, the boxing world, you know, the, the GGGs. And he, I mean, he, he is already, but it's not like if you went, you go to gyms in America, of course they've heard of Joshua, they know who he is, but that, they haven't got that fire burning in their eyes. Remember like a, a peak Mike Tyson, people really got animated and excited when they were talking about him. Wow, it's phenomenal. And we haven't got that yet in America with Joshua. And a, a spectacular win against Ortiz, I think, would have done that. I think it would have put him out there. I'm not blaming either Matchroom or Ortiz. I think Ortiz probably asked for too much and Matchroom probably offered too little. That's the art of negotiation. I guess you try and compromise and find that middle ground. I think, Eddie, when, when you come right from the bottom, you learn how to compromise a lot because it's part of your survival. You have to be able to compromise. Um, when you're coming from Eddie's position, you know, he's never been in a situation where he's had to take less than probably uh, what he has because he's always been in a position where he can just say, well, we don't want to do the deal, don't do it, that's fine, you know. Um, when you, you've got guys like Takam and, and Ortiz who quite often, they probably have taken fights where Maybe it's not quite, they're not getting quite the rub of the green, but you just go with it because that's, that's part of being that kind of boxer. When you don't have that drawing power, you have to take those deals. And I, I just wish that that fight had got made Ortiz and, and Joshua because I think Joshua now is coming closer to his peak. Ortiz is on the way down. And I think it is a fight that really would have kicked everything off. I mean, it's difficult also to be excited about Andy Ruiz Jr. in the sense that I've yet to see him in a really exciting fight. He throws a lot of flicky punches uh, against Parker even when he did get inside, which he, he, what I like about him is he does walk forward. He, he walks guys down and that's another reason why I thought Ruiz was the, the, the obvious choice for Joshua because Joshua had been preparing for Jarrell Miller who was clearly going to try and walk him down and Ruiz is that kind of fighter so even though his reach is completely different um, it, there'd have been a lot of things that Joshua would have been working on anyway that he could use against Ruiz. And that, that's one of the things that, that's, like I said, that stood him out to me as the obvious choice to fight. Also, you know, the fact that Ruiz went to New Zealand to fight Parker, you know that he's a guy who will do a deal. Okay, uh, you can find out what did he get for fighting Parker and then, you know, we'll give you a bit extra of this and a bit more and make it more attractive. You know that Ruiz is a guy that at one point will say, okay, yeah, I'll, if it's this much, I'll do it. Um, so what's going to happen in this fight? Well, Joshua needs to take the centre of the ring quickly um, early on and then box off that centre of the ring, keeping it long, uh, using lots of lateral movement. Ruiz needs to come inside, getting close, staying close as if, if he can. Um, I don't think he has the ability... Um, he has fast hands for a big guy, but I just don't think that he has the ability to stay inside and work at a pace with Joshua. Um, I think for that reason, at some point during the fight, the pace will drop, probably off, over the halfway mark of the fight. Um, then you're gonna see Joshua um, start to work less, 
exclusively with the jab and more trying to land you know the right hand and the left hook and it probably come around round seven that sort of mark that you're going to see Ruiz's feet slow down then it'll be easy pickings for Joshua and uh, I anticipate a Joshua stoppage victory I'm going to go for round seven uh, but any time around then and I hope you enjoyed the blog guys and uh, please hit the subscribe button we love joining members to the Hellraiser Boxing YouTube blog thanks for watching bye bye